Uh, hey guys, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Josh Saints. I do a zine called Negative Capability, which is in the back over here. I've done uh, five issues in the last 18 years, so I really suck at zining, but I'm trying. Um, this piece that I'm going to read tonight, I've never read before. I don't want to lose my page, but thank you very much. Uh, is going to be in my next issue, which will be out soon. Eventually, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's a, it's a, one of my list pieces, which I really enjoy writing because it's easy to continue and it's easy to cut if I don't find them funny. Uh, it's called Hate It or Love It. <clears throat> I started this scene with the declaration that I am a hopeful cynic and then clarified that statement with the disclaimer that I have hope, even if the only thing I hope for is the death of everyone else. <laughs> in order for me to grow as a writer, I need to find ways to challenge myself, to say new things in a new way, and to find new parts of my brain to unearth and explore. Toward that end, I have been thinking about all the things in the world that I hate passionately. I could do entire issues about the things that I hate. Maybe I've done that already. In any case, the challenge for me here was to find things that I hate to the point of violent anger, and then find at least one thing about them that is good, positive, healthy, useful, smart, or in some way redeeming. This is not to say that the little good outweighs the bad, this is still negative capability, but this is to say that even Hitler-like dogs, surprise assholes probably died on 9-11, and sometimes getting cancer makes people change their ways for the better. <laughs> Here are a few things that I have an irrational amount of hate for, some justifications for that hate, and then some redeeming quality that doesn't quite mitigate the evil, but maybe it means I would kill them last. Green Day. They are exactly the opposite of what they pretend to be. Punk. I am not punk either, but unlike them, I am not pretending to be. It takes more than makeup and a low slung guitar, Billy Joel. You can make catchy pop songs and think you're edgy because you have a lot of tattoos and you aren't afraid to swear or name your albums after pieces of shit, but that doesn't make you cool. That faux English accent is extra stupid because most Englishmen sing with American accents, except for Billy Brad. I wish I could tell you the names of the songs that I hate and why I hate them, but I can't. I know Time of Your Life because I've seen a lot of school montages in my life. <laughs> Green Day are pretentious, annoying, preachy, and preachy, but the only good thing I can think that they have ever done is a cameo in the Simpsons movie, especially when they all drown screaming in toxic waste. <laughs> Goldman Sachs. Matt Taibbi wrote that Goldman Sachs is like a vampire squid attached to the US economy, using its many tentacles to funnel money into its gaping, bottomless maw. That's my paraphrase. From manipulating markets to high-frequency trading to paying their own employees a king's ransom for doing nothing more than pushing buttons and making sales calls, they are the epitome of evil and greed. I think even Monty Burns would consider himself a piker compared to the demons at Goldman. They not only contributed to the last financial collapse, profited from said collapse, and then had the balls to act innocent, but they found a way to buy up rivals on the cheap. They recently settled the case with the federal government where they had to pay a fine of $5.1 billion dollars for their role in the global financial collapse of 2008. They get to write off half of that on their taxes, which assumes that they even declare any profits to be taxed in the first place. No arrests, no jail, no banning them from doing any of the shit that they did. These motherfuckers are literally ripping people off and getting away with it. They are also pouring their ill-gotten gains into the coffers of almost every of the presidential candidates, so you can be damn sure that their concerns will be addressed by the next administration. Their only saving grace is that they pay their executives exorbitant salaries that are taxed to fucking hell in New York City, so the more they make, the more money there is for cops and teachers and parks and preparations for the Great Flood of 2047. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> Arrogance needs to be backed up by real talent. The only song I would say that I know well by Kanye is Gold Digger, where he has the ingenuity to rhyme the word digger with the letter after M word. Very clever. You probably don't need me to tell you all the ways that Kanye West is a fucktard, so let me throw this at you. He killed his own mother. Now hear me out, okay. In 2007, Kanye was really starting to take off in his career. His mother was 58 and didn't look so good with him when he took her to pick up all his awards, so he decided <laughs> to get a plastic surgery that she always wanted, including a tummy tuck and a boob job. How sweet. Unfortunately, his mother died from complications from that surgery. He killed her. Just like that. And yet people still think he's a talented guy. For fuck's sake, he is personally responsible for making more Kardashians. More of them! It's hard to think of something good to say about him except that he will eventually fade away and die. And his divorce will make it even more of a laughing stock. Oh wait, it was funny when he was on live TV for the victims of Katrina and he said, George Bush doesn't care about black people. 
He's not wrong, but that's the only statement he's made that I can assess with any level of confidence. The rest seems like the blesser of a deeply insecure man who likes a finger up the ass now and then. Microsoft. Since the first issue of this zine, I have probably proclaimed myself an Apple fanboy, but also bragged that I was doing it before the backlash to the backlash to the backlash. Part of my love for Apple comes with a healthy antipathy towards all things Microsoft. They are always doing shit ass backwards, wasting huge amounts of money and buying anyone who thinks of a better idea than they could, from Hotmail to Nokia and Skype. I always laugh at their advertising when they try to be cool because it's so tragic. I went to a mall and saw an empty Microsoft retail store and I was like, what the fuck did they sell there? I guess they sell Nokia phones since that they own them now. They make their own tablets that are a huge hit. Yes, I make fun of them and use every opportunity to shit on a huge multinational corporation and its mouth-breathing founder, but I also have to admit that they do one thing better than anyone else. There is one product that is so far superior to everything else in the market that I sometimes wonder if my hostility is born more of jealousy than anything else. I know that they suck. They do evil things. They milk their corporate customers with substandard products, and they abuse their monopoly share of the market. But when I am home listening to my favorite songs, it is always with my Microsoft Zoom and all the great tunes I bought at the Zoom marketplace. <laughs> Time Warner. I think of Time Warner as a vast evil empire that has total control over a ridiculous proportion of American cultural content. They do everything from merging with AOL <laughs> to making some of the best original creative work in existence. Time Warner, despite what a vomit they are as a corporate entity, they own HBO, DC Comics, and a shit ton of other properties. When I was a subscriber to their cable service, there were times when I wondered if Comcast would ever come to New York, and Comcast is literally the worst company in the world. Their headquarters is a tragic waste of one of the best locations in Manhattan at the southwest corner of Central Park. I found it infuriating how often their monopolies made them bloated and complacent. I can think of a lot of things they make that I like, but as a company, I just feel sick when I think about them. But I have to say that when I lived in the city, I loved Pat Kiernan on New York One. I would wake up every day and enjoy him letting me know what the day would bring in his flat Canadian accent. I always loved the segment where he snorks at the day's headlines. I feel like just that segment alone has been done to death, but Pat makes it its own, makes it his own. And Roger Clark, I have no idea why they keep that dude around, but he seems to have won his job in a poker game. <laughs> and my last one is George W. Bush. I know I'm reaching back. This is, this is one I wrote a little while ago. In most political spectrums, I would place myself to the left of socialists in some areas and with the libertarians in other areas, but definitely more liberal than not, no doubt. My attitude is Zegazint, which is Yiddish for be well. I have an intense loathing for W for a host of reasons, from his war crimes, his mangling of my beloved native language, choking on a pretzel, and all those memorable quotes. Yes, W, I also believe that the man and the fish can coexist peacefully, but I also believe that the reality will be that the man kills as many of the fish as he possibly can using the latest mechanized death machines. There are thousands of books about what a fucktar W is. I mean, after he leaves the most important job in the world, what does he do? Make it, make it his mission to change the world? Cash in on a lecture circuit? Become a talking head on TV? No, he paints pictures of his feet. Motherfucker got reelected. There are people all over this country who are missing parts of their anatomy because of W's idiocy. <laughs> the only thing I can think he did right was not die and make Cheney president. Jesus, I was joking when I said I was rooting for the pretzel, but what a terrifying thought. President Dick Cheney. Oh, Thank you very much.